Hi, I'm Vernon L. Bowling, and welcome to another edition of Focus. As I hope you know, Focus has been on the air for over 40 years. We've been continuing to bring you the African American community problems, accomplishments, as well as successes that we've had within the African American community. Don't touch that remote. Matter of fact, you can get your pencils or papers together and write down some information that we're going to give to you that's going to be very important that you probably can use later. We'll be right back with more focus after these messages. Here at the Audubon Center, we connect inner city children with nature. Before I came to Audubon, I didn't think about the environment. I see children discovering a universe that wasn't available to them if the center wasn't here. This place teaches you so much. If there wasn't a place like this, I think a lot of people would be missing out. We count on the lottery to help us fund our programs for K-12 students. We need more friends like the lottery in the community. A poem by Nikki Giovanni entitled, I Take MasterCard, Charge Your Love to Me. I've heard all the stories about how you don't deserve me because I'm so strong and beautiful and wonderful and you could never live up to what you know I should have. But I just want to let you know, I take MasterCard. You can love me as much as your heart can stand, then put the rest on account and pay the interest each month until we get this settled. You see, we modern women do comprehend that we deserve a whole lot more than what is normally being offered, but we are trying to get aligned with the modern world. So baby, you can love me all you like because you're pre-approved and you don't have to sign on the bottom line. Charge it up till we just can't take no more. It's the modern way. I take MasterCard to see your visa and I deal with a discovery, but I don't want any American Express, because like the point is just say, I need a slow hand. I have been out in the sun since six o'clock this morning with my hands in the dirt. And I looked out at my yard and there was grass that was overgrown. And I got a little upset at first because my landscaper didn't come. But then I remember Dr. Afivi Adero and this incredible video that she did on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And she was showing us all of the weeds that are edible in our yards. And I was so happy that I didn't cut my grass. Joining me now is Dr. Afivi Adero, a naturopathic physician and a local icon. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank I am you so, so much. glad. As soon as I saw that video, I said, no, I have to get her on. I mm -hmm. see you all the time. We used to work out together. I know. Yeah, what happened? But we won't talk about that. That's not what we <laughs> But I was so happy to see that video because I said, wow, there are things growing in my yard that I can eat without even trying. I know a lot of people out here have these incredible gardens and that's good. You keep those gardens up. But for those of you like me who really don't trust my, my skills with a garden, mm -hmm. I can go to the weeds. Yes, you can. And you're going to show us that a little later. You're going to yes. show us some things that are growing in my yard that's probably growing in yours yes. that you can eat. Mm -hmm. So first of all, Doctor, tell me what is the difference between an MD and a naturopathic physician? I am trained as a primary care physician, but with the added you know, benefit of knowing the holistic therapies as well. Now, there's a big difference with you as well in regards to the herbal piece, mm -hmm. because I know a lot of incredible naturopathic physicians, but very few, if hardly any, mm -hmm. deal really know the herbs right. uh, the way you do. Why and how did you get interested in that? Wow, so that's that's been like kind of a, a journey, uh, just because I feel like it's my, my background. Uh, so as far as like the and the indies, all of us are trained in botanical medicine uh, to some degree. We all have to take that class. So most of us know about herbs to take, but um, a lot of indies gravitate towards like the 
the pre-made formulation is like the capsules and, the, and like kind of the synthetic uh, nutrients, like the man-made uh, supplements. And that's fine. They have their place. But for me, my background, my family, my whole family is from South Carolina, uh, Gullah. They, they would live mm. on the Sea Islands. And then even those that moved to the mainland, they still kind of carried those traditions. Mm. And uh, what they call um, like herbal medicine, root medicine, that was a big part of the Gullah culture. So I grew up, even though I, unfortunately, when I was younger, I wasn't as interested in the herbalism, but I saw it. You know, I saw people using bitters. I saw people talking about, you know, a dog fender and using uh, uh, weeds that you could get out in the in the forest or in your backyard. So that always was kind of with me. And then as I got older and I saw people suffering from uh, ailments that conventional medicine couldn't really address properly, I decided that, oh, maybe I should pick this back up. And then I just, it just kind of flourished from there. So I know why I would go to a naturopathic physician, uh, but actually I do both. I do naturopathy and I also go to a medical doctor, but mm -hmm. with you, I get two, two, two and one. Right. So I get that. But why would one, if they, if, if they're not anywhere near you, if they can't access you, why mm -hmm. would one choose a naturopath over a medical doctor? Well, it's pretty much what you what you said. You can get the two doctors in one. So you have somebody who is classically trained in what it what we call Western conventional medicine. So you're saying all naturopaths are, are classically trained? Oh yeah. So we all go through the same curriculum as the the people who are studying to become an MD. We have the same curriculum, and then we have to go through the same board of licensure when we take our exams. The only thing is that we have added onto that classic curriculum the natural therapies. So. With the ND, you really are getting two doctors in one. Uh, but, you know, everyone practices differently. Their approach is differently. Like you said, some people don't use the herbs. Some people, you know, have more, uh, kind of we call it green allopathy, which is green allopathy, kind of using supplements the same that people would use, prescriptions. And, you know, they all have their place. But if somebody is looking to have options, on whether or not they would want to take a prescription or take an herbal if they don't want to do any kind of chemicals, an ND would be a good person to give them the most uh, appropriate uh, approach for what they want um, health-wise. So why, why would you choose the herb over the, and I know, yes, but I want you to tell the sure. world. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain that. So um, as far as why choose one over the other, the herbal route versus the chemical drug route. Um, yes, the chemical drugs do tend to kind of turn off the body. That's the way that I look at them. So it does make the symptoms go away quicker. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you take an herb, you have to be consistent with a lot of them before they actually, you actually see the, the benefits of them. So here's where I see, you know, all the branches of medicine having their place. Um, you know, thank goodness for, you know, like some certain um, antibiotics and, you know, procedures that are, are, are good for trauma. And like, like say with a diabetic, if somebody went into a diabetic coma, I'm not going to give them uh, gymnema or bitter melon. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to tell them to take the person to the hospital and they need insulin. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. going to try to use herbs. So I think everything has their place. But if somebody is like just or like pre-diabetic or somebody has been diagnosed with diabetes and they're not in any immediate Tra uh, trauma, you know, or danger, or any condition, if they're not in any immediate uh, danger health-wise, it would be a g better idea to, like, to change the diet and then take the herbs that will support them, because not only are the herbs going to get to the root cause, whereas the, the chemical drugs go straight to the symptoms, they're not going to have the side effects that a lot of those drugs come along with. So that is the reason why most people choose to, to, to go the herbal route as um, versus the drug route because they don't want the side effects because eventually you're gonna have to start taking medications on top of medications for the side effects of the side effects of the side effects. So herbs just don't give you that, they, they heal. You know, they work with the body, they treat the cause and that's why I feel it's a better approach if you can catch it. Um, now, now there are some um, natural herbs that are grown right here in Arizona, lots of them. Yes. When we come back, we're gonna talk about what a real good healthy course of action is for us. I mean, not only food and exercise, but what are the herbs that we need to have in our medicine cabinet? That's something that we all want to know when we come back.
Here at the Audubon Center, we connect inner city children with nature. Before I came to Audubon, I didn't think about the environment. I see children discovering a universe that wasn't available to them if the center wasn't here. This place teaches you so much. If there wasn't a place like this, I think a lot of people would be missing out. We count on the lottery to help us fund our programs for K through 12 students. We need more friends like the lottery in the community. Welcome back. With me today is Dr. Afivi Adiro, and we are talking about natural health, natural healing, and some of the herbs that we can find right in our backyard. Yes. That's weeds. Now, we're going to go out a little later, and we're going to take a look at some of the ones that I have in my yard. But before we go, um, what we left with was, what is a healthy way of living? Mm -hmm. um, and to, and I'm, I'm speaking specifically with herbs because we already know exercise. Mm -hmm. We already know that we need to be working on the foods that we eat. But what are some of the herbs that we really need to have in our medicine cabinet and what would be the use for them? Oh, wow. There's so many. There's so Just many Just give, give, give yeah. me some baking. You know, like sure. every, everybody has Tylenol in their, in their right. medicine cabinet. So what are the, op the alternatives for that? What about headaches? What about dizziness? Sure. Things like that. Yeah. Stomach aches. Common ailments, right. So for aspirin or any kind of ibuprofen, anti-inflammatory or NSAID, if you're a person that does suffer from headaches or if you're a person that has like pains that you take ibuprofen and aspirin for, white willow bark, um, you can make teas with it, you can get it in a tincture, uh, you can get it in like the powder, a powder form in a capsule, and that can be taken And the that. tincture is a liquid. The tincture is a liquid, It, it right. comes in a little bottle with right. a little thing. With a dropper, with the dropper. alcohol extract. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can get glycerides too if you don't do alcohol. White willow bark for pain. Uh, and then also for um, just for overall inflammation and just keeping the, the inflammation, the inflammatory response in the body correct and proper. Uh, turmeric, great spice and herbal to mm -hmm. use. Um, and a, a lot of people are getting more hip to, to turmeric and using now, turmeric. Now, in, in using turmeric, mm -hmm. Is it using it on your food as yes. a spice? Is that good enough, or do you really yes. need to use it as a tea or something? You can use it throughout the food that you eat. Um, really, just um, because it doesn't have such a, 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 it's not a very pungent spice. It actually has a very mild flavor. You can just go to town and put it in all the foods that you eat. If you have something more chronic that um, requires more of a more of a, of a umph, you know, you can take the curcumin in a capsule form. Mm -hmm. But so you can keep it in a capsule form, but also put it in your food because there's something that happens when turmeric is cooked that um, allows it to release a lot more of its properties. And then also the addition of black pepper with turmeric uh, helps it to, and they're not really sure what it is, but it just something about the pepperine in pepper. It helps it, it helps the turmeric to uh, react better in the body. So just cooking it just does more. And um, and and what is it good for again? What is inflammation? Inflammation. Inflammation is also very antioxidant and um, anti. Uh, it helps with uh, like tumor growth and cancerous growth. So okay. it's very very good for that. Um, another uh, or mints. Mints are really good to have around. Mints of all kinds, so not just like um, spearmint and you know the mints peppermint. that you get yeah, peppermint mm -hmm. and things, but also things like um, like uh, oregano. Mm -hmm. Oregano is technically in the mint family, but it is a very potent mint. Mm -hmm. uh, it is antimicrobial, like cross the board. It's kind of like a very broad spectrum antimicrobial. So it's very good for fungal infections. And that's something that a lot of people in Arizona get infected with is fungal uh, respiratory infections that are very uh, difficult to eradicate. Mm -hmm. But something about oregano, it just kind of... Um, dispels spores. And so so that's once again on the food or is that as a tea? Right, you can use it as a tea. You can put it in the food again. So uh, you just steep it, boil some you, water, put it in mm -hmm. it, put the, the dried oregano. Like a teaspoon, I, I like to say a teaspoon per cup. So you take a teaspoon of the dry herb leaf and then put it in a, a hot cup of water. Never boil leaves, any leaf, any right. flower tops because it'll denature the, the constituents in the plant. So you can make oregano tea if you're like coming down with a respiratory infection or you have any kind even if you have like yeast infections, uh, any infection, you know, sour stomach because you ate something like food poisoning, mm -hmm. oregano is a great antimicrobial across the board. Oh, and that's wonderful. Yeah. So what now? What about stomach aches? Stomach aches. 
there are plenty of uh, herbs. Chamomile, I love for uh, stomach aches. It and that just, also, chamomile is also good to relax you and to help very, you go to has sleep. It's a great effect on the nervous mm -hmm. system. So what about children? Is chamomile okay for kids? Absolutely. I, um, I recommend chamomile for children all the time. And I also recommend it to colicky infants. So if you have um, a baby that's still being breastfed, especially, you, you don't want to give like a child, a cup, like a little baby, a cup of tea. They can't really. But you can do, drink it. But you can drink it as the breastfeeding mother. And then that that the constituents of the chamomile will actually come out into your milk. So they're feeding, and then they're also getting that calming, uh, the calming effect of the chamomile, and then that chamomile is also dispelling the gas and the, the digestive distress that causes the colic. So chamomile is great across the board. And, and once again, chamomile is also good for, 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 re for relaxing, and, relaxing and putting you to sleep. Yes. Now, now what about, um, so we did headaches. Did we do headaches? We did headaches. Yeah, that was the white willow bug. Yeah, the yeah. white willow bug mm -hmm. was the very first thing we did. Mm -hmm. um, so what about the common cold? Everyone common is cold? coming, come, and they're always pushing these drugs on everyone. Yes. The flu is coming up. Take a flu m medication. Right. So what, what do you recommend for the common cold? For the common cold, flus, all bugs that come with the seasons, I recommend recommend elderberry, bark, uh, not bark, uh, leaf and mm -hmm. the berry. And the reason I say that, uh, you know, everybody goes towards like echinacea and things like that, but actually elderberry has been used more traditionally for colds and flus and f viral and bacterial infections. So elderberry, again, can be made into a tea. You steep the leaf, you know, one teaspoon uh, per cup of water and, you know, in the hot water and make you a tea that way. But the berries, if you get the berries and make tea with that, you can make, you actually can boil those berries and make a decoction. And then that's something that you can take. If you make it very strong, you kind of take it by the tablespoon each mm. day and it soothes the throat. So if there's a scratchy, dry throat that are associated with the, uh, the respiratory infection, you can take it that way. And then uh, it's gentle enough to where children can take it. It's not something that anybody can overdose on. Uh, it boosts the immune system. It stimulates and increases the white blood cells that are supposed to be, you know, killing off the microbes. Mm -hmm. It's elderberry. I think elderberry is like one of the most uh, underestimated herbs, and I think everyone should have it. Wait, I hear some sisters out there talking about cramps. They're screaming, cramps, what oh, about gosh. cramps, cramps, <laughs> what about cramps, what about yes. cramps? Oh, my goodness. Okay, cramping. So one of the best herbs, so now we're talking about herbs that work fast, right? Because we were kind of yeah, talking right. about that, right? So cramp bark is one of the best herbs mm. for uh, cramping, hence the name, because it is a, a muscle relaxant, but it has an affinity for the uterus. For whatever reason, it just naturally does that. Also, uh, red raspberry can be paired with it because it is a uterine tonic. A lot of times we get cramps because our hormones are um, not in balance. Uh, there's inflammation, and red raspberry has the nutrients that the uterus needs in order to be more tonified, but it also helps balance hormones. So red raspberry, cramp bark, and then also I would recommend um, uh, Damiana. Damiana mm. is a great, uh, it's like, it's just a female reproductive hormone, uh, a female reproductive system uh, tonifier mm -hmm. in general. So it helps with the ovaries and the uterus. Damiana most of the time comes in a powdered form. So the leaves have already been uh, mm -hmm. ground. Mm -hmm. And that's a really good way to take it because you have to take, um, a, not a lot, but you need to have a good dose so that you can feel the effects. And some women actually feel the effects of Damiana within hours of taking it. I've heard. I, yeah. And you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> One of my buddies yeah. uh, who um, who takes Damiana and she uh -huh. swears by it. And, yes. Yeah, it's a whole nother kind of show that we would have to talk about Damiana on. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, but she swears by it. Yeah, so. it's great. So yeah. I would, I would um, recommend Damiana. I think I'm going to start that. Recommend Damiana, and I gave and I gave you some today too. Oh, I love you. Yes. Okay, quick, 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 because we gotta go. So tell me what we got here. Okay. Real quick. So here I have we have some cat's claw. Yes. Or actually, oh no, some devil's claw. claw cat's yeah, claw. devil's claw. Is I got some cat's one. claw in my window in in my yard. Yes. And you said that that's good for. Uh, that's good for uh, GI inflammation. So okay. If you have Crohn's, IBS, uh, okay, anything cool. where there's a disturbed bowel and this is devil's claw devil's claw look at hence that. the name you know and and there's a little pebbles and stuff that's yeah, inside so that. this is the, the seed pod the this seed the pod, pod of devil's claw mm -hmm. so the seeds come in there and this is native to the high desert as well so you use devil's claw for any kind of, of um like rheumatism so things like uh, arthritis osteoarthritis rheumatoid arthritis um any mm. kind of pain 
pain uh, symptoms in the in the joints mm -hmm. and um, the musculoskeletal system. Very good for that. It's also a bitter, so it helps uh, with the digestion as well. So okay, and, and these are stuff. These are things you took out of your yard. Yeah, this is what I, I had in my yard. It's a little moist because I wanted to keep them as lively How as possible. How cool! Now I see this growing right in my front right exactly. now. Exactly. Right? And I, I and I always pull it out and throw it away. Yep. So I can eat it. You can eat it. Oh my god. Okay. So I'll I'll, I'll, I'll go shop. through <laughs> anything uh, to stop from shopping. I know, right? <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> Next time, bring them over. I'll make a salad for you. <laughs> so that is the prickly lettuce. So oh, this grows wild You've seen everywhere. This. You've seen this. It's right in my. It's growing out of a pot right now. Right. Just exactly. Growing. I let it stay. And you it can use pretty. it. You can use it like a green. Um, you can identify it because of this tooth. The jacket. So I can edges. eat a piece of this right now. Yep. Just be careful with the spines on the back because you see the spines. It kind of tastes like arugula. Yeah, it's a little peppery, like mm -hmm. spicy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can use it like any other green. Um, most of the things that I'm going to show are just those like wild lettuces. This is mallow. This is another one that you probably see. Oh, all this over. was in my yard too. Exactly. Could you show this to me? This is mallow. Yes. And what is this used for? Mallow is another green. So you can use this just for like a salad. A green. You can yep, pluck the little leaves off, off of the main stem and, and put it in like a salad. Yes. <laughs> How's that taste? This is good. Yep, it's a lettuce. I'm it's not. You. It's not bitter like this one. Nope, because oh, this is good. Yes. Can I eat the flower? You can eat the flowers. Because there's some wonderful tasting flowers out mm -hmm. there. <laughs> I'm hungry. Can you tell? And then, <laughs> and then this is mesquite. Be careful. Here? Be careful with the spines. Ooh, yeah. Mesquite. That's the big tree that's right outside my yard right. in my neighbor's yard. It's hanging over mine, so that's mine. Yep. And mesquite is we another. Can eat this too. Is a, is another edible. Uh, native plant to this area and you can notice it by the leaves little leaves here so they're a little wilted but mesquite is phenomenal you can eat the whole entire plant it actually the most popular part of the plant to eat That's is good. the um the pods so oh, not that they're a little flower <laughs> no but you can eat that what i just said you can eat the leaves you can eat the leaves like a green no that's perfectly fine oh cool but it also has it's good though um, it tastes good yeah did you know that you could eat mesquite now everybody out there from arizona is saying yeah fatima we know i'm from new york so right. new yorkers and those of us from the east mm -hmm. coast and california maybe california would know right this is mesquite it's growing in the yard somewhere right and you can eat it you can eat it and the pods are the most popular part of the mesquite because they uh -huh. have this caramel toffee like flavor. So if you're, you know, looking to make like healthy like uh, caramel like desserts and things, vegan desserts, use the powdered pods, the dry powdered pods. So I could dry them in my dehydrator you can dry them yourself. And yes. then and then how how would I mix it to make it into like a You would I, grind I love it caramel. down in like a coffee grinder to make a powder oh, okay, cool. and then just add it to your desserts to make it taste more like a like that toffee like taste. And there you go. Mm -hmm. We're going to go in the backyard and see what I have that we could use for food. Mm -hmm. Okay? You yeah, going to show me? I am. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Okay, so what do we have here? What is this something right here? Yes. So what this, is this So this is some of the prickly lettuce that we that I showed you. This is a, like a small baby one. Okay. But uh, this is the same. And you can tell because of the two leaves. And then on the back it has these little spines that are not very sharp, but I wouldn't uh, consume those. I would just take these leaves off of the main stem and then consume it that way. Okay, and what do we have here? You said that this, this is something yes. as well. Over here we have a mallow. Again, it's smaller, but it's the same. Uh, you can tell by the leaves, they have like this, um, again, like kind of that tooth, but it's more like, it's kind of like a go-to colo that is more um, serrated. That's the way it looks. So. so is this healthy or is it just tasty? Well, uh, it's healthy too because like all other lettuces, they usually contain a, a lot of B vitamins, vitamin C, other antioxidants, essential oils. So it's like any green. And of course you have the chlorophyll aspect and they've been out in the sun. That's nothing, right? So. Now this is cat's claw and yes. I have plenty of it. Now what can I do with this? Because I'm okay. always cutting it down and throwing it away. So cat's claw is an excellent herb. Um, it's not native to Arizona, but because you ha it, it grows well here. I see it all mm -hmm. over the place. It's good for calming the nervous system as well. So mm -hmm. it is actually gentle enough to give to children. And it also has an affinity for the GI tract. So again, if you have in any kind of inflammatory uh, bowel syndrome, Crohn's, any kind of inflammation of the gut, you can take a tea of the dry herb of, of this plant and it will it will be very helpful. So you would, if, for, for those of you who don't have a dehydrator, you will put this in the oven or let it let it just can, dry out. Just Arizona cut it off dry and just put it yes. outside and let yes. it, aren't you? kind of close yeah <laughs> yep 
Okay, okay. <laughs> okay and this is in HD too. But anyway, you could dry the herb outside yeah. in the sun. Yeah. Or if you have a dehydrator, you could put it in your dehydrator. Or you put it in the oven if you just want to do something really quickly. Right. And then just let it dry out and then you would use it as a tea. Right. Right? Yes, yes ma'am. It's exciting. So I have so much you of that. You have a bunch of cat's claw. Yeah, I sure Wonderful. do. So I'm, it's for sale if anybody wants to buy some cat's claw. <laughs> Now this I never wanted to take up because I always thought it looked pretty amongst yes, the rocks. It is pretty. But after a while I have to, you know. But mm -hmm. So you're saying that this is something I can eat? Yeah, that's lamb's quarters. It's a, it's a young one. They can get uh, taller and bushier than this. Ooh, okay. Yeah, and then of course if we get more rain it'll get bushy too. But um, again, this is just another one of those wild lettuce that you can eat. So you can uh, put in salads, you know, you can eat it pretty much the way you would any lettuce. And again, full of B vitamins, antioxidants, chlorophyll, very good for you. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's go over here and look at this mesquite tree. Yes. Now yes. this is my on my neighbor's side, yes. but I am obviously benefiting from it. Yes. Because here this is my 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 grandchildren playing <laughs> pong. Oh, okay. Some kind of pong. Yes. It's not beer pong cuz they're too young. So, what is that? So your your yard has been infiltrated by some some of the mesquite that has dropped down. Ah. And these are like very, very young. Uh, it's gonna take years for them to become, you know, a big tree like that. But again, mesquite is a, a phenomenal plant because again, you can use the whole thing. It's full of uh, B vitamins, phosphorus, uh, magnesium, potassium. And then it's also a really good source of lysine. And lysine is good for like viral infections. So mm. people that have like HIV, uh, herpes, uh, colds, flus, anything that's caused by a virus would benefit from using the, the, the whole plant of mesquite. Okay, so, so, yes. you, so what you're saying is that I can just pull this out of the ground right now, dry yes. it out, yes. make a tea, yes. and then it would be good for all of those viral infections that yes. you were referring yes. to. How incredible is that? Yes. So, and here's the tree that it comes from. Here's the yes. mother. As I said, it's over in my neighbor's yard, but this side is on my side. Right. So if I wanted to just cut a piece for me, I can do that. Hey. You know, because it's on my side. Okay, we're going to go back inside and we're going to talk a little bit more. Yes. Okay? All right. Cool. This is exciting. Oh, my yeah. God. Look at this. I have, like, <laughs> dinner in my backyard. You do. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, you got it. You got food right in your backyard. Thank you, Dr. Adiro, for coming through. And I'm, I'm hoping that you come back and join us again. Oh, because you got a whole lot of information that we certainly yes. need. And thank you for joining us. And remember, just look in your backyard if you're hungry and you don't feel like going to the store. There's some weeds that you might be able to eat. All right. Okay. See you soon. Be focused. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Focus. And if you'd like to contact us, if there's a topic you'd like to see us present or someone you'd like us to talk to, the information is right up on the screen. So thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Same station, same time, when Focus continues.